Hello, Gary Stearman, time for another Prophecy in the News Daily Update. It is the 8th of March, a Thursday. In studio with me today, Bob Ulrich. And uh, Bob and I are going to talk about a recent event in his life. As you know, uh, we announced uh, last week that his father had passed away suddenly and unexpectedly. And uh, Bob has been taking care of all the details necessary uh, to a situation like that. And now he's back in studio. Bob, how you doing? Gary, I'm doing uh, surprisingly well, surprisingly well. Uh, I sent you a text last week, and the text said, Gary, for the first time in my life, I truly understand the phrase in Philippians that talks about the peace that passeth all understanding. Mm -hmm. I have to say I've never understood that before. I've known about it. I've quoted it before, but I've never really understood it because you know both my mom and dad are still alive. And uh, it's something that you hear people talk about, that peace that we have in Christ and that hope we have for the future. And I keep thinking of the phrase that Paul uses where he says, we sorrow not as others who have no hope. And I think about my dad and his life and what my dad has done for me, you know, during the 79, almost 80 years of his life. And, you know, you, you just, you look back, I'm 55 years old now, and, you know, your parents are not supposed to live forever. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not the way God planned it. And you look at your father, and you look at other fathers, and you look at relationships. And you and I talked a little bit this morning about how our fathers, at some point in our life, are basically a vision of what God is like. You know, our fathers are the law. Well, you know my dad pretty well. My dad actually worked here quite a few years ago mm -hmm. as a, a part-time volunteer, uh, full of energy, always a good word to say about somebody, and one of the hardest working men I think I've ever, you know, had the pleasure of knowing. Well, I'll second that. Uh, I, my recollection of him is that he, he was never static. He was always moving <laughs> from one place to another. I, I, I never saw him stop. Well, that's an understatement. <laughs> you know, the, uh, the last day of his life, he was doing three things that were just critically important to who he was. Uh, he organized a men's prayer breakfast at his church back in New Jersey. And this was just a, just a big part of his life, working with other men, a great encourager, people who were down and out, the downtrodden. He took them, put his arm around them, made them feel important. Uh, he had just started a discipleship program at his church. And this was something that I never really fully understood, that he was just so committed to discipling young Christians, discipling people who never had a mentor, who never really understood what it meant to be a Christian. And early in his life, he was a commercial painter. And for some reason, at almost 80 years old, he took a job painting someone's condominium. Um, and that was my father to a T. I mean, my mother says it all the time. Whatever we deemed as normal, my dad did the opposite. I mean, he was, <laughs> he was his own man. He, he had his own perspective on this world. And yet, and Bob has told me this many times, and I know it to be true, you had a very close relationship with your father per perhaps closer than most fathers and sons. Well, my dad and I have been business partners together since 1987. And rarely a day has ever gone by in the last 25 years where my dad and I have not talked about New York Yankees baseball, about the weather in New Jersey, about our business, about things we wanted to do with our lives, things that were important to me. My dad was just a great listener. Uh, things that were important to him. And I'm not sure I was quite as good a listener as he was. And you know, it's funny, your, your father, fathers and sons, you know, grow up in different worlds. My dad grew up the son of an alcoholic father. And he was a drunk, as my dad described him. Left the family, ran around with other women. My dad had very few memories of his childhood. And we rarely talked about it. And I, you know, looking back on it now, I think the reason is, you know, my dad's father is probably in hell today. And that's not something comfortable to talk about. My dad never talked about it, never really broached the subject, but it affected his life. And I think what happened is because of that relationship with his father, he bent over backwards to make my relationship with him completely different. Mm -hmm. And I'm holding, a, and this is, this is a great memory, this is probably the ugliest Bible you've ever seen. I mean, this is my Bible from the time I was a boy. Now, this has been carried around with me for years, and, you know, I look back on it, and it's, it's kind of funny, but what my dad left me, other than a lot of good memories, 
is he left me with a relationship with Jesus Christ. He introduced me to Jesus at an early age. In fact, I can prove it because in this Bible, and, and this, is, this has gone through a fire, this has gone through bad weather. I mean, it's a disgusting Bible. But it says, I accepted the Lord on October 9th, 1965. I was baptized on November 20th, 1966. And then I leaf over to the back, and in this handwriting that I don't even recognize, but I guess it was mine before mm -hmm. it turned into chicken scratch. You know, these were all my favorite verses. And, you know, I look at my, my life first, Second Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, mm -hmm. a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And, and I just think of the good times, you know, with my dad, how he, how he brought the Bible, brought a relationship with Christ into my life. My dad died within probably five minutes. He had a massive heart attack, right as the Grammys were about to begin. And I just find that ironic because as all those Hollywood entertainers were getting up on the stage to get their trophies and their awards, my dad was in heaven getting his. Mm. He was before Christ. Getting the real ones, I might add. <laughs> I mean, talk about a backstage <laughs> pass. Yeah. I mean, the ultimate backstage pass. So I look, I look back on, on my life and my relationship with him in just such a positive light. Can't say enough good things about what he left me. I didn't get to say goodbye, but I will get to say hello again, yeah. and I will meet my dad again. Uh, real quick, funny story. After you know, the initial shock of this all happened, uh, I planned a quick uh, trip back to New Jersey and got the family together, got flights reserved. My wife and I and my daughter actually drove back. And uh, when I came in here in the morning before I left, there was a book sitting on my desk. And this is the book. <laughs> my favorite subject, The Greatness of the Rapture, written by a, a, a Greek professor from Tyndale Seminary. And I read that book on the trip back home. That's going to be my book review for the April magazine. And I'll tell you, you want to talk about a wonderful, extremely well-written, carefully orchestrated book. Uh, we take bullets from time to time about talking about the rapture so much, talking about Israel so much, talking about, you know, salvation and rewards and some of these things that, you know, people are really, some of them vehemently opposed to. But the one thing he brings out in this book, and, and this is really, to me, something just critically important, um, the rapture is the first time that Jesus meets his bride all together, and we all meet each other face to face. And I just stop and think about that for a second and dwell on that, that in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the trumpet's going to sound and we're going to be caught up into the clouds to meet the Lord in the air is exactly what Paul says. Mm -hmm. And you just think about that for a moment and you just can't wrap your arms around that. Uh, the concept of literally a momentary resurrection happening all at once where everyone in the church, the bride of Christ, is together for the first time in history. That's a powerful it, concept. It is a powerful concept from, from the, the uh, beginning of the church at Pentecost until the moment of the rapture. How many Christians do you suppose there are, Bob, between, in that time span? I'm sure you know the number. Well, I, I don't even have a guess, but I would guess it would be in the millions, if not hundreds of millions. Uh, I can't guess, but in a, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, every one of those, including myself, including you, your dad, everybody is going to gather together. The greatest logistical uh, challenge, I think, in the history of the planet <laughs> because we're going to meet the Lord in the air. Now, if that doesn't excite you, uh, I, there's something wrong with you as, as a Christian because that's the most exciting thing I can think of. Gary, as a pilot, it's good to know the ultimate air traffic controller, isn't it? And he's going to have his hands full that he's day. Gonna, it, this, the angels of heaven will be busy that day. <laughs> there's no doubt about it. Yeah, there's one more thing I want to talk about. My dad was, uh, had some idiosyncrasies, as the family likes to laugh and chuckle about. He had his own way of doing things. And when dad would get onto something that he, really, re that he really enjoyed, that he really felt would bless other people, he shared it with everybody. I mean, he was just... He was such an encouraging person, you know, not just to me, but to everybody who knew him. That was his life. That was his ministry, encouraging men, encouraging other people. And you look back now and you can trace it all to the fact that he had no relationship with his father. Uh, his father was an alcoholic. Uh, Dad was saved in the mission in, in, New, in New York, uh, 15, 16 years old. 
uh, when he met my mother, and they got married when he was 18. Mm -hmm. And uh, up until that point, you know, he didn't know Jesus Christ. He didn't know about salvation. When he was saved, it totally changed his life and transformed him and turned him into a completely different person, you know, from what he turned out to be. But he discovered something on the Internet a couple years ago, and I'd, I'd like to read this to close the update today, and just in hopes that it blesses somebody else as much as it blessed him. He would send this to me. Uh, this is actually on the Internet. You can actually go read this on the web with background music, with beautiful graphics. I'm just going to read the letter, and you've probably seen this on the Internet. It's called Father's Love Letter. But I had asked you about it, and you had never seen it before. No, I had. And up until Dad sent it to me, you know, I had never seen it before. So I'm going to, I'm going to try to read this and get through this, you know, without getting emotional about it, because this was something incredibly important to him, and it's, it's fairly lengthy. It'll take me a couple minutes to read, but I, I think people will appreciate it when they actually understand that our relationship with our Father and our relationship with our Heavenly Father are really intertwined. It says in this father's love letter, my child, you may not know me, but I know everything about you. I know when you sit down and when you rise up. I'm familiar with all your ways, even the very hairs on your head are numbered. For you were made in my image, in me you live and move and have your being. For you are my offspring. I knew you even before you were conceived. I chose you when I planned my creation. You were not a mistake. For all your days are written in my book. I determined the exact time of your birth and where you would live, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. I knit you together in your mother's womb. I brought you forth on the day you were born. I've been misrepresented by those who don't know me. I'm not distant and angry, but I am the complete expression of love, and it's my desire to lavish my love on you simply because you are my child and I am your father. I offer you more than your earthly father ever could, for I am the perfect father. Every good gift that you receive comes from my hand, for I am your provider and I meet all of your needs. My plan for your future has always been filled with hope because I love you with an everlasting love. My thoughts towards you are countless as the sands on the seashore, and I rejoice over you with singing. I'll never stop doing good to you, for you are my treasured possession. I desire to establish you with all my heart and all my soul and I want to show you great and marvelous things. If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Delight in me, and I will give you the desires of my heart. For it, is, for it is I who gave you those desires. I'm able to do more for you than you could possibly imagine. I am your greatest encourager. I'm also the Father who comforts you in all your troubles. When you're brokenhearted, I am close to you. As a shepherd carries a lamb, I've carried you close to my heart. One day I will wipe away every tear from your eyes. I'll take away all the pain you've suffered on this earth. I am your Father, and I love you even as I love my own Son, Jesus. For in Jesus, my love for you is revealed. He's the exact representation of my being. And he came to demonstrate that I am for you, not against you, and to tell you that I am not counting your sins. Jesus died so that you and I could be reconciled. His death was the ultimate expression of my love for you. I gave up everything I loved that I might gain your love. If you receive the gift of my son Jesus, you receive me, and nothing will ever separate you from my love again. Come home, I'll throw the biggest party heaven has, heaven has ever seen. I've always been father and will always be father. My question is, will you be my child? I am waiting for you. Love, your dad, mm. almighty God. That's a great testimony. And your father was a great testimony uh, of faith in the Lord. And Bob, I, I, and I've known Bob for many years now, and, and Bob's life is a testimony thanks to his father. Uh, it's all about father and son, isn't it? It is, and, and I understand now clearly <coughs> why I do what I do, why I work here, yeah. you know, why I go through what I go through on a daily basis. And uh, let me just say it clearly in closing the program, I have another reason now to keep looking up. Indeed. Gary Stearman, thanks for watching today, and I will second that. Keep looking up.